part of the reason for this excursion is to explore some filming locations that were shot in this area. This area has inspired some major epic blockbuster films, so we'll stop along the way and talk a little bit about those. So up here we have Mount Ermslaw, which was uh, actually used as the Misty Mountains in Lord of the Ring Fellowship of the Ring. Up there is the Peak of Caradhras, and also as well it was known as the Misty Mountains in The Hobbit. So you can see Bilbo and the Dwarves trekking up the Misty Mountains after they leave Rivendell in An Unexpected Journey. This is where we'll be heading later on today. This is the Paradise Valley. We'll stop down at Arcadia Station and we'll check out some uh, filming locations there. <music> So behind me here we have the Reese Valley, and the Reese Valley was used in the latest installment of Mission Impossible known as Mission Impossible Fallout. In that film, the character Ethan Hunt, who is portrayed by Tom Cruise, comes across a medical camp that's located down here in this valley, and it's a stand-in for Kashmir in the north of India. In that film, he leads on a high-speed helicopter chase through this valley, and Tom Cruise himself actually trained and learned how to fly a helicopter specifically to perform the stunts in this film. We are now on the race river, and the bridge you see in front of you basically is that was used during the movie X-Men Origin Wolverine. Uh, towards the beginning you have this old couple that is gonna later on help Logan that drives along the river with a nice little helicopter. And then as soon as they pass through, the production left a funny mistakes uh, because basically <coughs> this place was crossed in Canada where people drive on the right side. So after the real view of the car passing the bridge, the car moved to the right side, but they left the arrow painted on the left saying this way, so it was clearly wrong way around. <laughs> to enter the Paradise Road into the Paradise Valley. So we are driving through the forest now of Paradise. This is part of the Mount Aspiring National Park and it is a, a native beach forest. This native beach forest was actually used in Lord of the Rings for a couple of locations, one being Lothlorien, the home of the elves, and the other being Armand Hen, which is where Boromir dies. And they shot a lot of the scenes down in here. Also, they shot some scenes from Narnia Prince Caspian in this forest as well. So behind me here we have Arcadia Station, which was used in several films. The first one I'll talk about is The Hobbit, the second film, The Desolation of Smaug. This is where they filmed Bayorn's house, just in those trees down the end there, past this series of little hills here. And uh, Bayorn's house was primarily featured in the extended edition of that film. So if you do watch the extended edition, you might see where the dwarves come out one by one and they come to greet Bjorn and you know, he kind of reacts in a bit of a humorous way. That was all shot down there. But the same property here was also used for the X-Men Origins film, Wolverine. And uh, in that film, Logan, who's played by Hugh Jackman, actually runs naked into a barn, which is located in this film, uh, in this field, I should say. And the barn itself was actually built in this location. And when the barn became attacked a few scenes later, it actually was blown up. They blew it up right here in the middle of this film. And then there is a helicopter and a motorcycle chase that takes place in this area here and along this road right here. In fact, you can actually see Logan on the motorcycle going over these series of little hills right here, which looks really, really cool. Now, in the background here, we have the Dart River. You can see this mountain that sort of sticks out in the middle there. That one's called Mount Knox. And this is in the movie Prince Caspian, part of the Narnia Chronicles, where right at the very beginning of the film, Prince Caspian escapes on a horse and he crosses over the Dart River right here. And you can see that mountain in the background there. The ship would have run into Lothlorien right there in the forest. And the view that you have roughly down there is somewhat, you can see the slope right there, that view there with the mountains in the background. Slightly different angle. We are 
at the start of the Dart River track. Or the Dart track. At the start of the Dart track. We're gonna make our way down the Dart River to Glenorchy. We have no idea how long this is going to take. Judging with the pace of the water, I would say a couple of hours at least, maybe three. And drive back. And then we have to drive back. It's a nice road. No stops on the way back there. No, no. All right, let's do it. Couple of centimeters below us. No, it's actually so good now. Good. If it stays that way, then I'm happy. Mm. No sign of the rock burn. Oh, look, there's a little creek coming out there. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> That's the mighty rock burn. If it wasn't for the rocks, these parts would be really fun. Yeah, this is the rock burn here. Super mighty. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, we should do this trip in like spring. Woohoo! By the way, you can taste the um the sediment. I haven't I have. <laughs> Mount Ernstler up here, this is Turret Head right above. Okay. Uh, dust storms. I want to see a dust tornado. Yeah, there's one. Look, right there, as soon as I said it. <laughs> I was like, I wonder if we'll see any today. I see some big dust tornadoes down here sometimes. Look at it, pick it up. Yeah, that's the thing, like when the water's shallower, there's like steeper drops. Yeah. But when it's um, deeper, then you're not scraping as much. Maybe this is where they film the Narnia fight. Great, you're gonna smack me in the head. <laughs> yeah, break bone. <laughs> like right here, this is where the bear attacks. Oh, Alfred. Screenshot. We'll have to have a look at it again and see. If it's not, then we're somewhere else. <laughs> Woohoo! Interesting. Yeah. Gives us a job to do. <laughs> yeah. So I don't fall asleep. This is pretty cool. Alright, going under the tree. That is pretty cool. Hello. 
how do you say river in um, Italian? Fiume. Fiume? Fiume. 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 Oh, yeah. right. So you can see the Mount Aspiring National Park right behind me here. This is Paradise Valley. Got Mount Ernslaw right up there. And this is Arcadia Station down here. We'll be saying goodbye to Paradise in just a moment and uh, we'll be making our way down to Glenorchy via the Dart River Bridge. Some of it merging here, I think. Or is it going backwards? <laughs> it's going to the left? No, it's going to I have to merge at some point. It's kind of cool, it's like a maze, and like yeah. anytime you come back, the maze can be different. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I wonder, honestly, the guys are working uh, in the jet boat. Have they mounted? Every, like, every time it rains, basically, they have to come back and check if there's anything. <laughs> What's changed? Yeah, oh, now we have to go this way, not that way anymore. <laughs> yeah. Over here to the left hand side, we have Arcadia Station, which was used in multiple films. We're beach, bro. Hey. All right, so this is part two of our Dark River kayaking trip. This is where we make our way down through the Dark River Bridge and to a place called Kinloch and then we'll cut straight across, uh, through across to Glenorchy. Yeah, straight up here. So this is where Isengard would be. So when they filmed Isengard from Lord of the Rings, they actually filmed it right over there. If the tower existed, it'd be right up here. But it didn't. <laughs> but, it doesn't. but these are the surrounding mountains that you see in the film. It's pretty cool. Let's do it. I think it splits up so many times. I don't know how they're able to glide the jet boat over here. You think so? There's the backdrop of Isengard right there. It's pretty cool. Good to see it from this angle. <laughs> Not again. There's like a tree stump or something. Alright, so we believe we're at the halfway point right here, right now. have to get through this little section here of rocks which we will have to get out or we can just carry it straight yeah, to there yeah, or we can float we can float to here yeah. it's only a two second float <laughs> Yeah. Now it's a 
kayaking trip. Definitely should last. And let's always stick with the largest amount of water from now on. Burn just over here. It's one of the great walks of New Zealand up through that valley up there. You get a little bit more water coming down from the uh, Rootburn River as well, so that might help us on our journey over some of these shallow rocks. Although there's a lot of space, so I feel like more water just means wider space, not necessarily deeper water. We'll see. I'd say, yeah, right. Yeah, right. We want to be going downhill, not up. That's okay, I'm gonna steer it up. There we go. Stay up against the side here. Yes. I was more of the kayak trip like this. Ah, I have to slow us down. Yeah, I think we should get maybe the spin out soon. <laughs> you end up losing some of it at some stage. What would have happened when the big flood came here? <laughs> nice. So we've agreed that we're about two thirds of the way. So we've still got one. Yeah, the sun least, is already gone. <laughs> at least, at least another hour to go. Uh, in the dark and cold, and my GoPro is dead now. Uh, this is the bridge, the famous one lane bridge. Um, and behind us here, we have Isengard. This is the uh, documentation of the very slow journey. It's pretty epic. We finally made it to Glenorchy. <laughs> what is the time? Nine or nine, so it's <laughs> nine o'clock at night. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> Five hours. <laughs> Five hours kayaking. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Look at that sunset. It doesn't get much better. Alright, so we finally made it after dark here to Glenorchy. Jesus, it's cold now. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know with a like and comment. Also subscribe and hit the bell-shaped notification button to keep up to date with our global travel stories.